here. My name is Scarlett Landon and I'm the registered dietitian at Axiom Foods. Um, I'll be presenting preliminary results on a clinical trial that Axiom Foods is participating in. It's being conducted by a third party company, Incronovo. And this study uh, is basically comparing the effects of a rice protein supplement provided by Axiom Foods versus a whey protein supplement provided by a whey company. Post-workout um, in a population of healthy resistance trained males, essentially athletes. The study is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. So we were really excited to take the study on because we were going up against the standard in the sports nutrition industry, the gold standard. Um, and we've always heard the stereotype that if you take an animal protein or an animal-based protein, in this case whey, after your workout that you'll turn into a beefcake or something like it. Um, <laughs> and that there's nothing better than whey, that, that nothing will get you results like whey. Whereas if you take a plant protein, you probably won't get the same results. So we were really excited for the challenge. So the purpose of the study was essentially to compare how rice protein um, compares to whey in recovery, muscle hypertrophy, which is muscle growth, and power and strength. And the first one I'll be going over is recovery. So specifically, they wanted to look at acute recovery or short-term short -term recovery following a high volume resistance exercise, and I'll explain exactly what that is. But just as in any study, uh, the first thing they had to do was recruit their population. In this case, it was 22 healthy resistance trained males. This means that uh, they had two to three years of prior experience with working out and lifting weights. They wanted males whose bodies were conditioned or used to doing this very thing because that's exactly what they were gonna make them do. Then they were randomly divided into two groups and assigned to either ingest a rice protein isolate or a whey protein isolate and neither the participants nor the investigators knew which supplement they were going to be taking, which is why it's a double-blind study. Now, in order to measure how much an intervention affects someone, you kind of have to gauge where they're at before the intervention. So before the workout, the baseline measurements for these athletes, they measured their soreness on a scale from zero to 10, zero being no soreness, 10 being the worst soreness possible. You can't even get up out of your bed. Then they measured perceived recovery on another scale, zero to 10. Zero being very poorly recovered, 10 being very highly recovered. Now remember these guys are used to regularly working out. So you kind of want to know essentially where they're standing before that in order to measure their percent change. Then we also measured, or they measured, their perceived readiness to train, how ready were they for the next workout, zero not ready at all, 10 being the most ready to train. Their workout consisted of three sets of bench press, military press, pull-ups, barbell extensions, barbell curls, leg press, and bent over rows. These were done at eight to 12 rep maximums with about only 60 seconds in between each workout. So this was a really, really intense workout for them. They actually ended up lifting an average of about 27,000 pounds per group. And that was uh, found to be statistically, uh, or no statistical difference between groups, meaning that they lifted the same thing pretty much, either whether they were taking the rice protein or the whey protein. Immediately after their workout, they ingested 48 grams of a rice protein isolate or a whey protein isolate, and this was mixed with 16 ounces of water. This was the only thing that was basically different in their diet. Otherwise, their diet was controlled by a registered dietitian on site, and she was basically controlling and supervising the amount of protein, carbs, and fat that they were ingesting. I quickly want to show you the <coughs> Uh, supplements that the athletes were consuming. Growing Naturals is Axiom's retail line. 
and they were matched uh, for the protein content. It was 48 grams for either supplement. The reason they chose Nutribio's whey protein isolate was um, in regards to the components that make up the supplement and uh, basically the ingredients are the same. You have your rice protein isolate versus your whey protein isolate. You have some cocoa and cocoa again, uh, natural and artificial flavors, organic flavor over there, some gums, and then finally uh, a sweetener, stevia, and sucralose. So they were essentially the same thing, or close to the same thing. 48 hours after their workout, they measured again their soreness, perceived recovery, and readiness to train. And they waited 48 hours because that's usually when you feel your peak soreness. So the results for soreness <clears throat> increased significantly for both groups. Um, you can see that at baseline, they were pretty much not very sore considering that these guys work out um, on a regular basis. And then 48 hours after, it jumped all the way to uh, six for almost both groups. There is no statistical difference between groups. Essentially, the increment is the same. The workout was intense enough to induce soreness. And then whether they were taking rice protein or whey protein, they ended up pretty much equally sore. Perceived recovery decreased significantly an average of about 40% for both groups. So they started off um, around a nine, which is pretty recovered. And then it decreased about 40% for both groups. You can see the decrement is pretty much the same, which makes sense after a workout, they feel less recovered. No statistical difference between groups. So whether they were taking the rice or the whey, they felt pretty much the same, equally recovered. Readiness to train, there was no significant changes between groups, basically meaning that from their baseline, there was not many, many changes up until 48 hours after, so they were both pretty much ready to train. So we can conclude that whether you're taking 48 grams of rice protein or 48 grams of whey protein post your workout, it's gonna give you the same results for recovery. Um, now we're gonna look at muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth. For this study, they're basically looking at changes in your body composition, specifically lean body mass, fat mass and uh, growth of the biceps and quadriceps. It was the same group of participants. They were already assigned to their rice protein or whey protein group. The baseline measurements um, for this study, they used a DEXA to measure their lean body mass and fat mass. It's basically a machine that scans your body and it'll tell you the percentage of your lean body mass and fat mass. And then they use ultrasound to measure the direct thickness of the quadricep muscle and the bicep muscle. And that's the thickness from the bone directly to the end layer of the muscle, not the circumference around. The training routine was pretty intense. Uh, it was a full body workout three times a week for four weeks up until the time that we got results. They alternated between hypertrophy workouts on Monday and Wednesday, and then they had a strength workout on Friday. The hypertrophy workouts were obviously more intense. Uh, they were doing uh, three sets, eight to 12 rep maximums with 60 seconds rest in between. And then the strength workouts was three to five sets, uh, one to five rep maximums with three to five minutes in between for resting. So it was a little bit less um, intense. And then every time after each workout, they were having 48 grams of rice protein isolate or whey protein isolate dissolved in 16 ounces of water. After four weeks, they measured, again, their changes in lean body mass and fat mass and the muscle thickness. This is an example. You can see the bone right here and then the end layer of the muscle up here. Um, for example, this person had 4.6 centimeters at week zero and then it grew to 5.16 centimeters in four weeks. Results for lean body mass increased significantly for both groups, an average of 3.5%. Um, you can see that the increment is essentially the same, even though the rice protein group started off a little bit lower, the increment is essentially the same, so the percent change, their increase in lean body mass is the same. These guys are basically gaining about a pound, a little bit over a pound a week, so they gained an average of about four to five pounds after four weeks. And that's only in lean body mass, so muscle. You know how hard it is for guys to gain muscle. 
Um, again, no statistical difference between groups. Essentially, the protein had the same effect um, on either group. For fat mass, fat mass decreased significantly for both groups, an average of about 5%. Um, you can see that it went down again. Uh, the increment was essentially the same, even though these guys started off a little bit higher, the percent change was the same. No statistical difference between groups. So the protein, either the rice protein or the whey protein, had the same effect on their fat mass. Quadricep thickness increased significantly, an average of about 4% for both groups. From, uh, again, same pattern increase for both groups, no statistical difference between the groups. They were both growing their quadriceps. Um, the rice protein guys had a little bit bigger quads, but it doesn't matter. It's still the same increase um, in muscle. Bicep thickness increased significantly 11%. Uh, again, no statistical difference between groups. You can see the increment is just about the same. Again, either whether you were taking the rice protein or the whey protein had the same effects on bicep growth. So needless to say, we can conclude that whether you're taking 48 grams of rice protein or 48 grams of whey protein, they're both effective strategies for increasing your lean body mass, muscle mass, and decreasing your fat mass. The last one I'll be going over is power and strength. Baseline measurements for power and strength. To measure their strength, they had them complete a one rep maximum bench, bench press, one rep max leg press, and then total body strength was measured by adding their leg and bench press. For power output, they measured um, their max wind gate sprint, which is basically they get on this machine that looks like a spinning bike, and that's connected to a computer, and you can see a snapshot here of the computer and uh, they're basically going as fast as they possibly can for one minute at a constant resistance or a constant force, and that basically measures how much power they're outputting. Their training routine was exactly the same. This was just a different set of measurements that they were doing to measure their power and strength, but the workout was the same. Post-workout supplementation, again, was the same rice protein or whey protein supplement, depending on the group that you were in. And then at four weeks, they measured the strength and power again. Uh, one rep maximum bench press results increased significantly for both groups. 6.5% uh, average for either group, whether you were in the rice protein or whey protein group. The rice protein guys started off a little bit lower. Coincidentally, they were the ones with the smaller biceps. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but the increment was essentially the same. No statistical difference between groups. I believe they were lifting about 12 more pounds um, after four weeks, so that's pretty impressive. Leg press increased significantly, a whopping at 23% for both groups. No statistical difference between groups. So you can see that the rice protein guys had a little bit stronger quads, but either way, the increment was exactly the same. Um, they were, I believe, pressing about 100 more pounds after four weeks. So that was impressive as well. Total body strength obviously increased um, about 18% for both groups. Again, no statistical difference. They were able to lift about 120 more pounds with their whole body after four weeks. Wingate peak power, power output increased for both groups, 12.5%, no statistical difference between groups. Um, they were outputting about 84 more watts, uh, whether they were taking the rice protein or the whey protein. So needless to say, we can conclude again that whether you're taking 48 grams of rice protein or 48 grams of whey protein, uh, they're both effective strategies for increasing your total body strength and power. In conclusion, after four weeks, um, with regards to acute recovery, we can say that rice protein isolate and whey protein isolate essentially have similar or identical effects. Rice protein isolate significantly improved lean body mass, fat mass, muscle growth, power and strength. 
and whey protein isolate did not show any additional benefits over rice protein in any of those parameters. Obviously, this opens up huge opportunities for applications of rice protein in the sports nutrition industry, not only for vegan and vegetarian athletes, but as a equally as powerful supplement uh, alternative for whey. And rice protein has the advantage over whey for one thing that it's from a plant source, which is huge considering the nation's current health and the trends toward having more healthier options available on the market. Also, the fact that it's from a plant source means that it's naturally going to be low, or I'm sorry, no cholesterol in it and naturally low in fat. Uh, there's possibility, there's no possibility for it to have any contamination of hormones or antibiotics. It's from a non-GMO source. <clears throat> it's allergy friendly, uh, considering the amount of people who are increasing it, uh, in the world with food allergies. Uh, it's gluten-free, also again with the market increasing for gluten-free products. It's low in cost and it's available organic, which weighs also. <laughs> so with that said, I'd like to leave you with this question. How can rice protein enhance your sports nutrition product? That's it. <laughs> Who wrote that?